So this new OpenAI announcement might have just killed the AI automation agency as we know it. And unfortunately, it completely changes the landscape of AI business. And really all of the work that we've done up until now is basically wasted. So I might be taking a break from YouTube for a while. I don't even know. Psych, sorry to clickbait you with that one, but the fact that you clicked shows you are worried about these recent updates. So you should probably be watching this video anyway. Now these new OpenAI announcements have shaken up the AI world to say the least, and they have massive ramifications for our businesses as AI automation agency owners. The question is now whether or not we can adapt to survive in this new environment and what new opportunities we have to capitalize on from them. As someone who is running multiple successful businesses in the AI space right now, I'm paying very close attention to the news and have been speaking to really the smartest people that I know about all of these recent updates. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you what I have learned over the past 24 hours, starting with a breakdown of the most important parts of the OpenAI Dev Day announcement, what they mean for AI automation agency owners or really anyone looking to build a business in the AI space. And also at the end of the video, I'll be throwing in how you can get access to my GPT's 101 resource, which I'm outlining my full strategy on how to dominate this new industry so that you can start making money from this as soon as humanly possible. Now the most important part of the Dev Day announcements was of course the release of GPTs, which are custom versions of ChatGPT. These GPTs are really the first step towards allowing users and companies at large to build their own AI assistants directly within the ChatGPT interface. The idea with GPTs is that you can create a customized version of ChatGPT that is perfectly tailored to your own product or company. Now this may sound familiar because this is basically what every company has been asking for and looking for for the past couple of months is like, how can I have ChatGPT but with my own data and that's suited to my business? Now, the way OpenAI is going about creating these GPTs is using what I'll call four ingredients. And these are things that you can add in to create your custom GPT. And the first one of those is prompting. Now, prompting is, is nothing rocket science for you guys at this point, but basically the written instructions that you give to your GPT in terms of how it's supposed to behave how it can engage with the users, the tone of voice it can use, what it can and can't do, things like that, all through natural language. So there's nothing really that new there. Now, the second ingredient that we can add into our GPT is a knowledge component. Yes, this is something we have all been trying to do with our own chatbots in many different ways with vector databases and custom knowledge bases with all these different platforms. Now we have it built into the GPT's platform and the builder as well. So OpenAI has sort of eaten up all of these different uh, services and, and businesses and SaaS products that have popped up to allow you to extend the knowledge of your of your chat GPT API core. Now they have built it in the house and really brought it into the solutions offering for these GPTs. So you can upload documents, you can upload CSVs, all sorts of things. Then you could have that as your custom knowledge base for your GPT. Now this is all native and built in and this is going to really simplify the process for you adding knowledge to your AI agents uh, in a major way. And the third ingredient you can add to your GPT is memory. Now this is a much improved form of memory over what we're used to using. Instead of just using the basic sort of recent five messages, OpenAI has started to implement long-term memory via threading, which is something I can't go into this video, it's a bit more complex, but essentially it's a longer term form of memory that's gonna make your agents and assistants even more powerful. And the final ingredient and the most exciting of all is of course actions. Actions are things that you can allow your GPT to be able to do. Uh, this can be things like call zaps and, and do things via Zapier. But more importantly, you can add any kind of custom functionality and custom function and make that available to your GPT to be able to do sort of external functionality and actually do things in the real world. So what GPT allows you to do is to pick and mix all of these different ingredients and combine them into your own custom chat GPT experience that can do certain things and behaves in a specific way. Now, another major announcement at the Dev Day conference you should be aware of is that GPT-4 got a massive upgrade up to 128,000 tokens. They've made it faster, they've made it cheaper, they've apparently made it smarter as well over a larger context window. So expect a big upgrade on GPT-4 as well. And finally, OpenAI released GPT Vision, which allows us to do a ton of cool things with language models and images. Now with all of these new updates, what does this actually mean for people like you and I who are running AI agencies? Well, at the end of the day, this hasn't actually changed the underlying opportunity that we built our agencies and our businesses on top of, which is helping businesses to integrate this new technology, facilitating the adoption of AI technology into the world, into the businesses, etc. 
at the end of the day, this has just made our job easier on the delivery side because it's simplified a lot of the things that we were already doing, but we're having to use all these different third-party platforms to do. So by OpenAI integrating knowledge into the assistance, by integrating actions and all these sort of things that we were already trying to do, they just simplifying the service delivery and the idea remains the same. We're still doing the same things. The tools have just changed. And in my opinion, the tools have gotten better and, and really benefited us as the agency owners who are implementing these solutions. Now, to be fully transparent, like many of you, when I first heard that news of all of these new updates and how it's completely changing the industry, I did get that kind of sick feeling in my stomach where I was like, oh, like the human beings don't like change. Uh, it's, it's no secret. And when we get hit by a curveball, it doesn't feel nice. And it's okay to, to feel that way, but it's important to um, give yourself a bit of time to, to soak it in and do your research and come up to speed on what this opportunity is. And if you're like me, you'll be seeing that this is actually a massive opportunity for us. And it's really the one that we have been waiting for. Us as AI automation agency owners, we've already been doing a lot of the stuff. We already understand it. This is really the opportunity we've been waiting for to simplify a lot of the difficult parts of running these businesses. So I think we are the perfectly positioned group of people to really be the first to the scene here and be the first to start making massive money by facilitating the adoption of this GPT's technology. There will be ludicrous amounts of money made with these considering that the entire world basically needs to adopt these at some point. So again, there's a massive market for this stuff and we are the first to the scene to be able to make the most of this opportunity and start to make money from selling these things and implementing it. Another concern that you may be having is that these look so easy to set up on stage where can I as an agency owner actually provide value? How can I charge people for this when they can set them up themselves on stage in 30 seconds? Uh, that's really the same as it's always been, which is a knowledge gap. People need to know how to implement these into their business in the ways that work and provide the most value for them. There's still a ton of info that you need to know in order to be able to start to put this into practice into businesses. And more so there's the creation of all of these custom actions for businesses that can do all sorts across the business on websites, etc. And there's massive place where you can still continue to create value. Now all within the confines of OpenAI's environment, which gives us some kind of permanence, at least for maybe the next year, in terms of how this is gonna be rolled out to businesses and we have this environment to do all of this in. And I think it's important to note that while Zapier might look cool on the demos and be like, wow, Zapier can do everything. Why would they need custom coded stuff? And why would they need custom functions to be made? Zapier is only good for these little things, these like little personal assistant kind of things. If you're actually doing large scale operations in a business where you're connecting to a database, where you're connecting to a website and doing like actual real and, and more valuable tasks, you are still going to need to develop some kind of solution and create custom functions for that for these different GPTs. And honestly, I would not be surprised to see huge demand open up for GPT specific agencies to specialize in setting up and managing complete GPT systems for businesses. So. This is like retainer kind of territory where you could charge three, four, five thousand dollars per month to a business to set up and then consistently build functionality across the business and continue to improve their GPTs for the business. It's like you're an agency specialized on just GPTs development for businesses. So that really narrows the scope down to what you can do for a business. If you want, I can do a full video on the side here around GPT specific agencies. So if you want me to do that, just let me know in the comments below. Now, what can we learn from this recent shakeup and how can we use it to predict sort of future events within the AI space? I think it's probably fair to say that OpenAI will continue to eat up this new tech that's built outside of their own gates in the open source community and stuff, like all of the uh, custom knowledge based technology and things like this. They've just consumed that up and brought that into the sort of in-house functionality and native functionality of the GPTs. I think we will continue to see that moving forward as they find these limitations of the technology that will hit those limitations. People will try to build around it and then they'll probably pull all the best ideas in and continue to advance their technology by doing that sort of iteratively over time. And, and from this, you really need to keep in mind that going too far beyond what's sort of the latest and greatest in the space can leave you overexposed by committing too many resources to really hacking your way around to get these models to do things that they aren't yet capable of doing because you're gonna spend all of this time and energy and resources to create that stuff that's likely just gonna be wiped out when OpenAI comes out with a solution of their own. And the second thing we can gather from what Sam Altman was saying at the conference is that OpenAI is looking to warm the world up towards this concept and towards this future of autonomous AI agents. And that's really looking to be rolled out in the next year. So what we are in is really phase one right now with GPTs being their way of, of getting people used to using AI assistance that can help them to do different things. Now, the next stage of this is going to be likely multiple different agents being able to communicate with each other, which is an entirely different ball game of its own. So what we really need to be focusing on as AI automation agency owners is that business owners need to be prepared 
in advance for this new feature that's coming out likely next year. So there's more reason than ever for these businesses to be keeping up to date with setting up their own GPTs and things like this because they can't jump from zero having no AI set up, no assistance, no agents, anything set up within the business, all the way to this autonomous agent future with all of them talking together. They can't jump from that in the space of a couple of months. It's going to need to be gradual. And if they're not moving now, they're going to be left high and dry, which is great for you selling your services because there's very much a need for them to keep up to date. And if they don't, then they're gonna be really on the back foot in the industry, which is not where they wanna be. And so finally, how can you start moving on this opportunity right now? Firstly, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, you should definitely do that first because I'm going to be posting a lot of information on how I'm navigating my AI businesses through this massive shift and how I'm pivoting them to really make the most of this new opportunity. So if you want to be getting all of my sort of latest learnings and, and tips for how you can make the most of this, then you definitely want to be subscribed so you don't miss out on future videos. And while you're down there, leave a like if this has been helpful, please. That'd be a big help. The second thing you need to be doing to make sure you're on the front foot of this opportunity is to start building your first GPTs within the OpenAI Playground. Now this is already available. I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to do it in a video that's coming out likely in a day or so after posting this. So if you don't wanna miss that, also make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I'll be showing you just how easy it is to start creating your own GPTs and getting really familiar with how they work. And finally, a lot of this AI and GPT stuff might not seem that far-fetched to us right now, but other businesses and business owners have absolutely no clue what is going on. So your job is still to be the bridge that connects them to be able to understand and implement this new technology. And that starts with you understanding this stuff yourself. So you need to go out there, do your research, watch a bunch of other videos, get in there and start building your own GPTs. You need to understand the stuff yourself to ensure you're on the front foot and can start helping businesses to facilitate the adoption of it. So go do your own research and stay up to date on this as much as you can. For those of you who are interested in a deeper dive on this topic, I've actually just recorded and posted a new video with my CTO Spencer, getting his thoughts as an expert AI developer on these updates, which is available on my second channel for Morningside AI, which will be linked below in the description. So if you wanna check that out and hear a deeper discussion of things, it's gonna be available down there. And for those of you who have stuck around to the end of the video to get access to my GPT, 101 resource detailing my exact steps and really strategy to make the most out of this opportunity that's going to be available on my free discord and my telegram which are both linked down below so you can join those and get access and really join the biggest community of aspiring ai business owners on earth so if you want to get in their network meet other people really stay on the forefront then my community is the absolute best place to do that but that's all for the video guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one